Now that we covered the basics of integrals, it's time to dive a little deeper. In the next several videos, I will be covering a few different integration techniques to help with more complex integrals. The first one that I'll be covering is U substitution. In order to understand this technique, it's important to see where it comes from. To see that, let's take a quick derivative. Say we have this function, y equals sine of x squared plus x. Because you've watched and of course smashed that like button for our video on the chain rule, you know how to take the derivative of a nested function like this. You know that when you have a function in this form, the derivative becomes the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside alone, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So for this example, the answer becomes the derivative of the outside, which is cosine of x squared plus x, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus 1. Okay, that's great, but what does this have to do with integrals and u substitution? Well, if you have been watching any of our videos on integrals, you might remember me saying how integrals and derivatives are inverses of each other. So if we take the integral of our derivative here, we should get back to where we started. But how do we take the integral of this? There are two functions being multiplied together, and there isn't really a product rule for integrals like there is for derivatives. Well, this is where u substitution comes into play. Essentially, we want to take the integral of our chain rule derivative like this, but it looks a little ugly. What if we just replace this g of x with some variable u? Then we can also replace the derivative of g of x with the derivative of u, du dx. Then, although these differentials aren't really fractions, it can be helpful to think of them like that. If we do, we can then cancel out the dx on the top and bottom to leave us with a much more simplified integral. Okay, let's try doing that same process with our real example. Let's replace our inside function of x squared plus x with u. Then we need to replace the rest with our derivative of u. If our u is equal to x squared plus x, then du dx is equal to 2x plus 1 from the power rule. This result can completely replace what's left in our integral. Then the dx's can once again cancel, leaving us with a clean looking result of the integral of cosine of u du. And knowing our trig antiderivatives, we find the integral equals sine of u plus c because it's an indefinite integral. Then we can plug back in what our u is to get our final result of sine of x squared plus x plus c, which is exactly what we started with in the beginning, if of course the c is equal to zero. Now this example is pretty straightforward because we already knew what to make our u. But how do we solve these in general when we don't know what the answer should be in the end? Well, our first step is to figure out what our u should be. Now this is the most difficult part of the process and requires some critical thinking. In general, you want to make your u something in the function that when you take the derivative of it, it cancels some other part of the function and leaves it looking a little simpler. This step does take some practice, so please don't get down on yourself if you find it difficult at first. In the beginning, you might feel lost on this step of the process, but the best part is, you can always pick anything to be your u and go through the rest of the process to see if it pans out. And if it doesn't, you can adjust your u and try again. And as you do more and more examples, you'll get the hang of it and it'll start to come more naturally to you. And before you know it, I guarantee you'll be a u-sub wizard. Okay, so once you have your u, the rest of the steps are fairly straightforward. The next one would be to find the derivative du dx of your u. Then you can substitute your u and du into the function and hopefully get rid of the x's and dx and simplify the function down. If your choice of u ended up working out, you should be left with a function that you can now take the integral of. Finally, if all goes well, you can substitute the x's back in to replace all the u's. And as I mentioned, if things didn't end up working out, you can always adjust your u and try, try again. Eventually, you'll find your final answer.
Alright, let's see this in action with a quick example. Say we want to calculate the integral of e raised to the x cubed times x squared. Well, our first step would be to write this as an actual integral, which would look like this. Now, looking at this integral, I'm not too sure of a way to integrate this directly, so let's try u substitution. So, first step is to pick what our u is. And remember, we want to pick our u in such a way that its derivative cancels with something in our function. For example, if we picked x squared to be our u, the derivative would be 2x, but that doesn't exactly cancel with anything. However, if we instead picked our u to be x cubed, our du dx becomes 3x squared, which more closely resembles something in our function. To isolate du, we can multiply both sides by dx and get du equals 3x squared dx. Now, this example is slightly different than the last one because after that step, we still can't plug this directly into our integral. This is because we have 3x squared dx, but we only have x squared dx in our integral. Fortunately, if we divide both sides by 3, we get our desired result. Okay, let's now substitute stuff in to see if things get simpler. Plugging in our u, we get e raised to the u. Then plugging in our du, we get the new integral of e raised to the u times one third du. And rearranging this a bit, we get something that is much simpler to take the integral of. We know constants like one third are just along for the ride in integrals, and the antiderivative of e raised to u or x or any variable is just the same thing. So we find that our overall integral is one third times e raised to the u plus c. Then our last step is to plug all the x's back in for the u's, which leaves us with our final answer of one third times e raised to the x cubed plus c. So that's it for this video. In the future, I'll be posting a video going over more u sub examples to hopefully help you learn how to solve more complex problems. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our content. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.